Pastor uh, Benji Nobles with Greater Believers Worship Center uh, here in the beautiful city of Moultrie, Georgia. Uh, God bless you. I pray that whenever and wherever you view this video that you are experiencing uh, some the power, the presence, the provision, protection of the Lord uh, in your life. Now, I've attempted to go live with this video uh, on several occasions. Uh, I don't know whether or not it is human error uh, or just it wasn't meant to be. Uh, we do know that uh, there are no coincidences. At least I believe that there are no coincidences in God, especially when it comes down to the life of a believer. And so I'm just going to record uh, some of my thoughts. And if uh, you see this video, uh, I hope it bless your heart. Uh, one of the things that um, that I've been thinking, uh, I know everyone is being impacted by what we know is COVID-19, Corona-19. Uh, and I believe that uh, anybody know anything about you know, God's ways, God's doings. Uh, number one, uh, if it's happening, uh, at any moment, at any time, God, who is omnipotent, who is all-powerful and omniscient, can stop it at any time. Uh, so that may be an indication from us that uh, it's God's divine will. Uh, and some people don't believe in that, uh, but I believe that, you know, uh, that God is in control of all things. Uh, as believers, we ought to believe that. Uh, even when he allows the devil uh, to interrupt something about our lives. Um, it's still his divine will. And we see that a lot of times in, we see that often in the book, in the Bible, or when Job, or God allowed Satan to interrupt Job's life. Uh, so another thing is, is that it is impacting every nation. It is impacting Every person, rich, poor, middle class, upper class, lower class, every nation, uh, it is impacting uh, all systems of this world, the economic system, the agriculture system, the education, the religious system. And so that is a good indication that perhaps there is something divine that's taking place. And so as a student of the word of God, as uh, not only... Um, a teacher of a scripture, uh, but even if I wasn't called to minister, or even if I wasn't called to be a pastor, or I wasn't called to be a teacher. Uh, first of all, I'm a student. Uh, he declared Timothy, Paul declared to Timothy to study yourself, self approved unto God, a workman uh, that needed not to be ashamed to write and divide the word. Uh, same thing occurs that occurs in Second Timothy. But in 1 Timothy, he said, all scripture is given and inspired by God is profitable for reproof, instruction, correction, and righteousness. Uh, so it, it is our responsibility as children of God to, number one, to, uh, to see uh, what God is saying during this time. Uh, we quote the scripture in Proverbs uh, to trust in him with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him, he shall direct that path. And so it is our responsibility to see uh, if God is the shepherd, he's the Lord, he's the shepherd of our soul. It is our responsibility to see, okay, where is it in the word of God that may instruct us during this time, that may give us some type of peace, that may give us some type of divine instruction? What do we do uh, as children of God during this time? Can I tell you something that COVID-19 may have taken us by surprise, but it did not take God by surprise. Uh, all things from creation are clearly seen uh, by God. Uh, one of the things that uh, occurred is, is that God, uh, who is omniscient, he's omnipotent, he's omnipresent, he's everywhere. He can be, God is, can be everywhere at one time. Scripture declares him being Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. That means that God exists in the past, but yet in the present, 
but yet can exist in the future. So that's one of the aspects about God that, that we have to appreciate as believers, that nothing that's occurring during this time is taking him by surprise. And so it is our responsibility to look in scripture to see, okay, what, what in scripture, which is our divine uh, instruction, which is the mind of God, where in scripture can help me to have some type of some type of consolus or some type of comfort during this time. Romans, in the book of Romans, it declares that those things that were written in scripture at four time, he was talking to the church at, church at Rome, were written for our learning and admonition that we through patience of the scriptures may have hope. When Paul wrote that to the church at Rome, what he in, declared unto them that if you look in the Old Testament scriptures, this should be something that we can learn from that, that through those we may have hope, we may have some type of inspiration, we may have some type of comfort when it comes down to dealing with life circumstances. Uh, and so the Bible serves as that scripture, that writ, that document for, for, for us, that as we search it, as we, as we study it, as we read it, it may provide us some comfort and some hope uh, and some patience. He said patience in scripture. And so it is my, it is my task now to say, okay, what is it? Uh, where is it in scripture that may address uh, something similar to this? And, and I'll be honest with you. It reminds me of, it reminds me of uh, in the book of Exodus, uh, chapter number 12. Uh, at Greater Believers Worship Center, we was looking at that. Uh, and, and we know that God utilized 10 plagues to deliver his people out of Egyptian bondage. And that last plague, uh, I think in Exodus chapter number 12, uh, was a plague of death of the firstborn. And so there was, there was, there was death that was going to occur. God gave his people a uh, divine instruction how to cover yourself uh, during this time, during that time. And so can I tell you something? Number one, there is a divine instruction how the child of God is to protect themselves or how the child of God is to find some comfort, some hope. Uh, so this time reminds me of Exodus chapter number 12 when, when God uh, decreed a sentence uh, that the death angel uh, uh, that that there would be death, uh, and I have to I have to uh, really restate death angel. Never seen the scripture where there's such thing called an angel of death. Uh, the Bible said the destroyer. As a matter of fact, God said I will come down. Uh, so uh, he utilized death of the firstborn uh, to get Pharaoh's attention. Uh, and can I tell you something? There was something that Egypt his people, the Jews, uh, were specifically doing during that time in order to cover themselves. And and some of you know the story uh, where where God uh, told them to take a lamb, a firstborn, a lamb out of the sheep or a lamb out of the goat. Uh, and he said that during that time, you're going to roast it with fire and you're going to eat all of it. And he said something like uh, the bread that you shall eat uh, make sure it's unleavened bread. Can I tell you something? Every aspect about that, about that decree, every aspect about that, those instructions, uh, says a lot about the time that we're living in. Number one, uh, God speaks divine instruction how to cover Him, His people, and how to protect His people. Number two, uh, we must be obedient to those divine instructions wherever they are. Um, number three. Uh, he says that uh, you have to consecrate. And, and the thing they did was shut, watch this. They shut themselves in a time of consecration. Everything about the initial Passover, uh, for those of you that knows, everything about the initial Passover showed us uh, and was a type, a shadow, was an example of what it means to consecrate, to really dedicate yourself uh, during a time where God is moving. And that's important, where God is moving. Uh, whenever God moves in a powerful way, uh, our responsibility as the people of God, our responsibility as the earth is to stand still and let God move. 
Uh, there's a scripture that says, be still and know that I am God. Uh, and there's various uh, translations to that. Uh, one translation said, be in awe and recognize who I am. Uh, another translation says, stop, calm down. I think that's the contemporary English version says, stop, calm down. I will deliver you. And so regardless of what translation you're reading, one of the things that we have to do is calm down and be still. And so during this time where we have been, we have been given orders uh, through the president and some of us through the governors, to stand still, to, to shut ourselves in. I believe those are divine instructions also because when God moves like this, listen, we shouldn't be doing anything. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, I am of the conviction that, uh, that uh, even in our attempts to, uh, to, to have church, uh, in our attempts to go on as normal, uh, we have to be careful with that. Uh, because when God moves, uh, we there's nothing that we can do normal. And I know we have these avenues where, where we can come on and try to continue as normal. But can I tell you something? When God is doing something, I don't care what we think we ought to be doing. We cannot carry on. We cannot behave. We cannot think as normal. That's what was happening in Exodus chapter number 12. Them Hebrew, them Hebrew Israelites, those, those Jews did not behave as normal when they knew that God was going to come down and actually pronounce a judgment uh, when God is going to move. So I think it's very important that we really look at some of our behaviors, uh, even in the church, uh, some of our decisions. And, and I really think it's important that, that we don't behave as normal. Uh, and perhaps that's why my live stream didn't work because uh, in my attempts to uh, carry on with Greater Believers Bible Study, uh, it may not have been God divine's will. I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still meditating, and I'm still praying on that because He did say, "Be still," and when you be still, that means stop all your movements, stop your movements. Stop your actions. Stop what you think you need to do. do the contemporary English version said, calm down. Another version said, be in awe. So I think this is a time where the church really needs to um, evaluate some things and, and, and really decide whether or not we ought to be behaving or trying uh, to attempt to behave as normal because this is not normal. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, and I think anybody that have any uh, knowledge of God, any sense and reverence, reverential fear of him, recognize that at this moment, uh, he is the only one that can stop this. Uh, and if he, he if he is the only one that can stop this, then perhaps we need to stop our movement. We need to be still. We need to stop what we're doing. We need to stop trying to carry on, behave as normal. Uh, uh, the, the government in and of itself have shut us down, have told us to shelter in place. Um, and so I think, you know, we really need to see and really need to make, uh, uh, meditate on whether or not we ought to uh, try to have church as normal. I know for some of us, we want to encourage our members, our parishioners. For some of us, we want to maintain, maintain contact but those that have been attending Greater Believers Worship Center know that uh, oftentimes I say, you know, what's going to happen uh, when the church doors, doors are closed? Can you have a relationship with him when you cannot make contact with your pastor? Can you have a relationship with him when you cannot make, when you can't have a contact with the praise and worship team to sing your favorite song? How is your relationship with God when you can't? Uh, approach the threshold of what we call the church, the four building, the four walls, the building. Uh, can you have a relationship with God when you can't contact your pastor or your, your, your leader? It's a challenge. And don't you know that some individuals who have made the church, the four walls, the building, uh, some individuals who have made their pastor, their God, 
uh, the Lord is having problems during this time. Well, you know, those of you that are part of Greater Religious Worship Center know that one thing I have declared is that we are not going to build our relationship uh, and our focus as such that we cannot maintain uh, our relationship with God outside the four walls of the church. And I know that, you know, this is a very unpopular, but I believe that, you know, one of the things that you look at Exodus chapter number 12 is that the, the people, the Jews, the Israelites, they did not behave as normal. When they were shut in that house, they did exactly what God told them to do. They was quiet. They were, they, they roasted that lamb, a firstborn lamb, a firstborn goat. Uh, they ate, ate their unleavened bread. And one of the things that leaven represent is sin. So God told them, do not eat leavened bread. You know, leaven is what, 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 what bakers put in a flour, put in dough to make it rise. Uh, it represents in scripture sin. So we see that the people of Israel were declared, do not partake in anything when it, they do, do not partake in sin, do not carry on as normal. Yeah. He also told them to take the blood of the animal that was slain. And so we know in order to be preserved during that time, flesh had to die. Something flesh, fleshly had to die. For us, it represents what the crucifying of this flesh, the mortifying of our members, to put to death, the sinful habit, habits, the sinful ways, those things that's in our lives that's not pleasing to God. It also represented Christ dying on the cross. He became the Passover lamb. He became the ultimate, uh, the ultimate uh, uh, sacrifice for sin. There's a lot we can learn from that first Passover in Exodus chapter number 12. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to show you. Uh, he, had all, he also said, take the blood of that, of that lamb and put it on the doorpost as a covering. Uh, there's a scripture in Revelation said that we are overcomers, what? By the blood of the lamb and by the what? word of our testimony. And so that blood uh, represents covering, covering from death. You know what I think? This is a time where we really need to recognize who Christ is, what he has done to really bring into focus the redemption that's found in Christ. Yeah, during this time of sheltering in place, it's a time that I believe that we ought to be consecrating ourselves. We ought to be dedicating ourselves. We ought to be dealing with things that are in our lives that's not pleasing to God. We ought to be, we ought to be quiet and still and let God do what he intends to do. Uh, we ought to be, you know, uh, really searching our lives. We can't behave as normal. Can I tell you, can I say that? Have I said it? We cannot behave as normal. Yes, even in trying to carry on church, even in time, even in trying and attempting to maintain my congregation, to maintain the assembly. I don't believe God intended us to, rem to carry on as normal. Every time God moved, even on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit poured out, they did not behave normal. Anytime God places his foot on earth, we are not to remain normal. We are not to carry on, behave, and think as normal. Also, he told them this. There's, there's something interesting uh, that he told them uh, in Exodus chapter number 12 also. He said, you know what? Gird up your loins. He said, make sure you have your shoes on. Make sure you put up your on your socks. Make sure you are, pre you are prepared that once this is over to go out of Egypt. Can I tell y'all something? I believe once this is over, there's something that God is going to expect out of his people. And, then, and when it comes down to redemption, when it comes down to deliverance, we always know there is God pulling us out of something and bringing us in. Deuteronomy, he brought us out that he may bring us where? In. So I believe, you know, you know, although this is our first time seeing something of his magnitude, it's not God's first time allowing something of his magnitude. God always have patterns set. This, this, this walk with God ain't deep. He always have scriptural patterns in scripture that helps the child of God 
walk during these times. So I believe, I believe that when this is over, when this thing, watch, watch this, pass over, there's something God going to expect us to do. He going to bring us out. He's bringing us out of something. He's utilizing, he utilizing COVID-19 to bring us out that he may bring us where? Into. That's ultimate deliverance and that's ultimate redemption. Uh, there's something that occurs, I believe, uh, I asked this question, what did, uh, besides the things that we visually saw uh, his people doing during that time, oh, there was something else they had to be doing uh, while they was waiting on uh, the lamb to cook, uh, while they was uh, roasting it with fire and waiting to eat it and, and kneading uh, the dough, the unleavened bread. Uh, it's interesting that Psalms, uh, the book of Psalm uh, 116, Psalm 116, you know, I researched and, and kind of looked in the scripture to see, you know, what Psalm, what prayer uh, was they praying during that time. And my research showed me that it was Psalm 116 uh, and also Exodus, I think, chapter number 15, uh, chapter number 16. There's a prayer. There's a song of Moses. I believe during this time, we ought to be worshiping. We ought to be praying. We ought to be uh, 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 separating ourselves from sinful ways, beliefs, habits, habits and values uh, that we've allowed to come become a part of our lives. That's the only thing left to do. That is the only thing that we can do is seek God during this time, pray his covering, pray that he will allow this thing to not affect us. And let me say this, let me, let me say this, this thing, this, this move, this disease, this, this uh, pandemic is having effect on all of us. It's having effect on all of us, but we have to watch and be careful what, how we approach it, how we allow ourselves to be influenced by. The first thing the child of God does is we don't see, we don't see the voice of the world we don't see the voice of the president we don't see the voice of the governors the mayors and all those individuals that have been placed put in place to enact laws and legislation but our first response is is to seek the voice of god to see what god is now you know what what's going to happen you know what prophetic meaning this have i don't know you know uh it takes time it takes time to dissect uh, it takes time to really understand this. Uh, I don't think, you know, uh, I haven't heard of anyone that have said, thus save the Lord, this is why this is taking place. I know, I do know by, just by God's ways that you know, he's doing something. There's something he's getting out of it. There's something he wish uh, to take place. And, and I do know this, uh, when God moves, he, deal, he deals with the world, but he also deals with who? His children, his people. And so, as being a child of God, as being a believer, as being a Christian, you know, uh, I can't worry about, you know, well, I, I guess I can as a pastor, you know, how is this going to affect the world of those outside of God, you know, to evangelize. Uh, but I also have to ask, okay, how do I apply? What is it that I need to know when it comes down to handling and being, being shut in and sheltering in place? What I do is I get my life right. I focus on the things of God. Uh, I use it as a time of consecration. Uh, I'm still, I'm calm, I'm in awe, you know, we reverence. Uh, one of the things that scripture declares in Psalms 34, that when the righteous cry, God is attentive to their cry. Uh, and so I believe that as children of God, we ought to be, you know, crying out during this time. We ought to be, you know, really, uh, and I'm not saying crying out as to, saying something loud i'm saying actually shedding tears of uh, that conviction of uh, those tears is a uh, reverence and, and awe of who he is and and just uh, make can i tell y'all something we're just dust we're just dust the small specks of dust when it come down to the larger things it's amazing that you know one small particle that's not visible with the naked eye can cause disruption in everything can I tell y'all something? God wants to get, God is getting, I know he got my attention. 
God wants to, God is seeing something in this earth realm at this time. And can I encourage you, child of God, listen, be still. You can't approach this normal. If there's any children, if there's any Christian that's approaching this normal, something is wrong. Nah, this ain't a normal time. So if it's not normal time, if it's abnormal, you know, not normal, then we shouldn't be, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have a normal walk. We ought to be praying more. We ought to be fasting more. We ought to be studying our word. We ought to be meditating. We ought to be getting so close to God and, and reverencing him uh, like none other. We cannot behave as normal, but we have some individuals that's trying to behave as normal. Child of God, you can't do that. You cannot do that. Listen, I wish I was able to come on live and I wish that, you know, I would be able to answer some questions and and um, and have some dialogue with this and, and see what your comments are. But I'm not able to do that. And so I'm just going to allow it to be a, a learning lesson for me, number one. Uh, but if it's a learning lesson that God want to say, hey, I don't want you to carry on as normal. I don't want you to try to hold church as normal. But then I'm telling you, then I need to listen. I'm going to listen. When God is trying to get my attention called, I try to come on live four times. Now, I don't know. You know, some people say, well, maybe it was the devil trying to prevent you. Nah, nah, no, no, no. I, I ain't saying that. What I'm saying is, is that perhaps this is a time where it, it was meant for me uh, to just make a, a recording and not come live, not have the interaction. Or it was meant for me to not try to uh, carry on church as normal. Because the reason why I was going live is so that those members who are connected to me, that we can be connected uh, during the week. But guess what, y'all? Greater Believers, those Greater Believers Worship Center members that's going to listen, to, that's going to see this later on, you know that prior to this time, I've given you, we God has given us enough word. Uh, at the beginning of January, we was talking about having confidence in God. And ever since then, that's all Hebrews, what? 10 and 26. Uh, therefore, cast not, therefore, away your confidence which in God, which has great recompense of reward. So listen, be confident in who you are, whose you are, what you are, why you are, where you are, and why and where you're seated. Uh, God bless you. This is. Pastor Benji Nobles of Great Believers Worship Center. I pray that you was blessed by it. Listen, go go read, go study. Exodus chapter number 12. Study Exodus 12, 13, 14, and 15. Study Psalm 34. Study Psalm uh, 15 and, and Psalm uh, 116. And see what God's people was doing during this Passover. And I believe that you will be blessed. God bless you and I love you. Mm -hmm.